Before we get into the video and talk about how you can go from 5k followers to 150,000 followers in a month, I want you to know that this is not going to be some sort of quick algorithm hack tip secret whatever you want to call it like this is going to be deep it's going to be long it's going to be raw and you want to sit down and really listen to this if you are committed and if you actually want to put in the work afterwards no dopamine hits right here if you are looking for a quick fix of whatever then you're better off leaving this video right now and go and watch some mr beast entertainment nothing against mr beast but not the same format right here. This is going to be a three-part series about my journey as a content creator and how I went from 5,000 followers to 150,000 followers in a month. And we are going to start this three-part series right here with the first part, which is going to be about a bulletproof mindset. Because I have been doing this for 10 years, so you cannot expect to just blow up tomorrow because you have an algorithm hack which you just found on the internet. But yeah, let's not waste any more time on this intro. Let's get into it, self-development. And yes, that is a term people throw around these days. Like it's, I don't know, Black Friday basically. But it's the truth. If you want to actually build something with a foundation that can last for a long time, then it has to be starting up here. Like you cannot expect that you, because you found something on the internet, like some sort of, as we talked about, a hack, that you will be this changed personality. You have to become real with yourself and you have to become authentic and raw. That's what the people want to see out there. They are done with polished personas. They are done with bullshit being like pushed towards their feed. They can see right through you if you are full of shit or if you are actually real. So before anything else, you want to become a better version of yourself. And that only happens if you actually put in the work and self-develop yourself on a daily basis. Whatever that is, you have your interests, you have your beliefs, you have your values. Those are all things that forms you as a person. Those are the things that make you, you. And if you are going to be neglecting that part then you will not be in a position where people will take you seriously so what self-development does for you is it creates an environment where you are now becoming resilient against obstacles you become more confident you become more aware of what actually matters to you and you become more attractive and I don't mean attractive in like the physical approach or the physical kind of appearance, but you become attractive as a person, as someone who people want to, you know, listen to, as someone who is now becoming an authority about what they talk about. And this all comes only because you decided to invest in yourself, decided to, you know, learn more about that very topic you're interested in whatever it is be it cooking be it playing the piano be it repairing toasters like whatever it is you want to become an expert in you have to actually put in the work to learn about that stuff and this will create opportunities this will create something where you now are aligning with certain people out there and where you can make connections with and build a network around those very interests you are interested in. So basically, it's just gonna maximize your own potential. And if you are not going to be willing to invest in yourself, then why should anyone else come around and follow you and be like, ah, oh, yeah, this person actually gives me something that I, you know, can also now implement in my life or actually learn something. Or if you are an entertainer, that's fine too. But then you actually need to entertain and not just like pretend that you're entertaining. And the biggest ripple effect I have seen for myself during that journey is how self-esteem and confidence grew exponentially. Because I, for myself, I have been an introvert and a very, you know, in the background kind of person who is like observing but not really talking. I've been there for a long time and, and I'm still that person because it's just, 
I feel comfortable in that position as well. But I now also stepped out of my comfort zone and actually developed myself in order to be able now to talk to this camera like I'm doing today. I would have not been able to do this six to 12 months ago. Trust me, the people who know me, they know that I will not be doing this a year ago. Today I'm doing it and I feel totally fine with it because there is no filter right now. There is just me sharing what I know most about and it's the things I have always been passionate about. And that's why I can create a network and connect with people now on a different level because I don't need to pretend. I don't need to put on a mask and pretend to be someone, but actually I am not that person. So yeah, relationships will be better when you actually develop yourself because now you also become emotionally more intelligent. You become a person that people want to listen to. You have more empathy towards things. You are actually someone that is not just there and you know trying to be this guru or whatever like you actually know about the things you talk about and people will understand that part they will sense that they also sense if you're full of shit so they will also sense if you're actually authentic like people are very 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 good in spotting those behaviors trust me so go ahead and set aside time in your day where you're just going to focus on developing yourself whatever that is it has to be aligned with your values beliefs interests whatsoever and make sure that you are investing as much as you can into becoming that person you want to be mindset makeover so with that development and your self growth basically there is a shift in a in your mindset there is a complete makeover happening and that makeover usually comes with much more positive outlooks than you maybe used to have because we are living in a world where there's so much noise and so much information and so much also kind of negativity, especially on the internet. So we are just kind of like absorbing this information, which tend to be negative in a way. And now this is becoming our kind of worldview of things. And you know, you need to shift that into a more positive outlook. So you need to limit basically what you are consuming. Like you need to stop paying attention to bad actors and too much news. Like there is so much shit going on in this world. And I know this, and I'm not here to tell you that you shouldn't care about this stuff. But if you're spending your time on a daily basis consuming news, what's happening in this world, then this will be not good for your mental health. It will not really help you as well to become more resilient, basically, when it comes to like, you know, outside information. Like, yes, be aware of what's happening out there, but don't sit down and consume like news like two hours a day and then be like depressed and mentally completely fucked, basically. The only thing now you actually know is that there is bad things happening out there, but you don't know that there is also a lot of good things out there. So, you know, always be aware, especially with news, they are, getting paid to deliver you stories. So if you buy into those stories, they will bring you more of those stories. And there is so much more out there in this world, which is also very positive. And we need to focus also a bit more on that side. No, not ignoring that negativity completely, but limit it. And just don't completely fry your brain with bad news basically. And then also something that is very important and that helped me and still is helping me a lot is you gotta celebrate the small wins. Small wins are so crucial because you can always have that big goal where you want to be in life and how much money you want to make and you know how big your family should be and um, where you want to live maybe one day and, and whatever. Like you can have those huge goals but if you're not celebrating the smaller parts, like the smaller wins along the way in this journey, then this would be very hard for you to actually kind of like understand that you are on the right path. Like you are learning every day what you're doing and you are basically building a foundation to get to that big goal. If you're only celebrating when you reach that goal, then I think you will not maintain a very kind of disciplined and 
motivated process along the way. Because now, what is there to celebrate but that big goal? So always go ahead and celebrate smaller wins. Let's say you posted three to four times this week on, uh, on, on social media and you have never done this before and this is a new thing for you. Then give yourself some credit and be happy about it and be like, hey, cool, I'm actually doing the right thing here. Let's do it next week again. It's maybe not where you want to be completely in your life, but it's already closer to that very person. So celebrate small wins, but don't celebrate everything either. Like don't just be like, oh, I wrote a caption for Instagram. Well, that was a good day, wasn't it? Yeah, but is it now really moving the needle to like towards that direction? Give yourself credit, but keep it also moderate. And then you would just always be motivated to keep going but you're also not kind of like becoming too hyped about everything in your life. And there is never problems. There's always only challenges. That's the shift you want to make. Problems equals negative. Challenges equals positive. Because you can always find problems in your life. Like everything is a problem. If you want it to be a problem, it can be a problem. But you can also go and be like, this is a challenge. I actually take on this as a challenge because now I have something that can actually help me to grow. But if you just like see it as a problem, like you're not a good writer and you're like, oh, now I have to write this caption for my Instagram post, but I actually just want to post it. Like, I don't want to, oh, this, is a, oh, this is a problem. Like, no, it's not. It's a chance for you to actually understand how writing works because the writing is everything, everything. Like if you shoot a video, your script is the first thing you want to have. And you know, if you post a tweet, it's all writing. If you, uh, post on LinkedIn, it's all writing. If you post a blog post, it's all writing. Like writing is so essential that you should be good at it anyway. But take on the challenge, you know, even if you cannot do like five push-ups, then it's not like, oh, there's a problem, I can do this. No, maybe just do them on your knees first until you can do them without your knees. You can only grow if you actually do it and not just complain about it all the time. The power of saying no. This one is huge because it's gonna be giving you so much time back which you did not have before because you were saying yes to everything people were throwing at you. You need to start saying no to things. At least that's what I'm hearing. I'm a nice person. And I want to say yes to everything people can ask me. And I did this for a very long time. What happens is now I spend so much time helping other people, supporting everyone, but myself. Like now I'm so focused on always be available for people and become this yes-sayer instead of just actually working on my stuff and having my boundaries and my values and you know, my interests I want to actually pursue. You need to become like balanced when you say yes and when you say no, because at the end of the day, if you say yes to everything, you will not have time to do anything for yourself. I started this to really implement in my life and it helps me a lot. It helps me here, mindset, because now I'm just, I'm more free. I don't have all these commitments I said yes to in my life. I'm actually free to do what I, what I want to do. Also, when you say no to something, you say yes to another thing. This is how opportunities are being created. This is how now you as a person who wants to be, you know, whatever that person should look like, you are now focusing on your stuff you're saying no to what you don't want to do and you say yes to what you actually want to do and now you're creating a network with people where you get opportunities as well. But if you always say yes to things you don't want to do, you don't really get opportunities. You just get more things you need to say yes and that's just gonna make you miserable. It's gonna, it's gonna make you feel very, very not true with yourself and you will be very sad at some point and depressed. So make sure to say no once in a while or more than that and you will see what's gonna happen. It's gonna be so liberating for yourself and you don't need to be rude. You can be very straightforward, but kind. Just be like, hey, sorry, I just have too much on my plate already. I cannot take on any more projects. Maybe next time. And they will be totally understanding. Or like, hey, sorry, but this is just not the right time for me. You know, uh, we can catch up on another time and talk about it. Or maybe like, hey, this is just something I'm not really interested in. You know, I'm really trying to you know, work around certain things uh, in my life, so I need to focus. They would understand. And if they don't understand, then they are the right people to be around anyway. So don't even, don't even 
try to fit in like don't even try to make them happy like if they do not understand you saying kindly no to their requests eliminate them immediately out of your life because they will just steal your time there will be like these this parasites you know like trying to like get everything out of you but then not really caring about what you want so get rid of that coming back to how do you build this instagram following and what does this all have to do with you know building an instagram it has to do everything with that because it's called building a bulletproof mindset for a reason if you cannot be real and authentic with yourself you can never build an audience you will never be able to connect with people you will never be in that position where you can like you know sit down and be comfortable and confident with yourself this is a journey it will take maybe a few months for you to actually improve but it can also be years from now so you need to really be committed ask yourself always this what is your alternative this is what i've been doing for quite a while now i've always been like when i came to a certain point where i need to make a decision i'm like what is the alternative like what exactly do i want right now and if i do this or don't do this what is my alternative like is it really something i could say yes to if you can okay fair enough if you can't or if you don't want to because it would make you miserable again then you have to be like okay maybe it's better to stick around for the next few years and actually become good at what i am doing and become a better communicator and become a better community builder and become a better with people in general and with my own skills than going back to what I was doing before. So, because there's a reason why you are here today and watching this video and actually want to improve, you know? So keep that always in mind. What is your alternative? Again, it took me 10 years to be sitting here talking this confident into a camera. So give yourself time. You will need time, dedication, commitment, all the fancy words you can think of that actually brings you there. You will need them. And you will also need to actually do and not talk. That's gonna be your main driver. Fitness and mental sharpness. This one is a big one for me as well, because I know how many people are struggling with this, especially mental health. And I have been struggling too for years. Like I have been in a dark place where everything didn't make sense and, and nothing was actually working for me. I felt like I just, you know, don't belong and I, I, uh, I wanted to give up basically. So I know this is one of the biggest struggles to overcome because when you're not there and when you're just observing from the outside what that person is going through, you don't really understand what's happening because you just, you try to help them and you try to, you know, comfort them and you try to make them feel good, but it's really not a place where you can actually do anything. You can just be there and listen, but you cannot do anything. That very person needs to come out of this very dark place by themselves. I have been there. That's why I can speak about it comfortably, actually. So I know what helped me. Prioritizing fitness and mental health in your life, then things can actually change very quickly. And fitness, I mean, you need to sweat. You need to go on a workout. You need to move around. You need to just be active. Move your body as much as you can. Because your body is not designed to sit like this all the time, every day, I don't know, 12 hours, whatever. Like, it's not designed to do that. It's designed to move around. We are a species who did not sit around a hundred years ago. And these days we have our laptops and our phones and do this all the time. And it's like, we are adapting, yes, but we need to move. We need to, like this is a whole, this thing is an engine. And if you're not moving an engine, it's gonna break. Like if you're coming back two years later with, uh, to your car and you haven't been driving your car in two years, it's gonna have some problems, more, like more likely than not. You need to move around and you need to make sure that this is a priority. But if you're just treating yourself like crap and then also talk yourself down, it will just go further down that rabbit hole and it will not be good for you. So fitness and mental sharpness is crucial to just really develop 
a strong mindset, basically. What I am doing is I am prioritizing five times a week to go to the gym. Sometimes it's four, but usually it's five. And then I also try to get in like 10,000 steps a day. Sometimes it's 7.5, sometimes it's 12,000. Just moving around, go outside, fresh air. Like outside, even if it's cold, it's gonna clean your brain. And maybe try not to have like, you know, um, your headphones in. Just try to actually calm down, let your brain process what you have been you know, consuming maybe all day and like, and, and do. We, we don't give ourselves too much time to like actually process what we have been learning. So going on a walk is a perfect opportunity to just calm your mind and actually process all the things you have been learning. And also a lot of creativity comes along with it. Ignore the noise and the doubts. There will be people in your life which are going to support you and they will support you no matter what. And that's the people you want to have around. If those people are not supporting you and they are just kind of like talking you down, just maybe because they are feeling not good about themselves actually, but they wanna also not make you feel better because that makes them feel even worse. <laughs> like, it's funny how that works, but it is the truth. You need to get rid of them. And also let doubt not be something that pulls you down, but that actually pushes you. It actually needs to push you. Imposter syndrome is real. I still have it also some days, but at the end of the day, it's something I need to do anyway, if I wanna move forward. So. Doubts is very much something that is naturally just there as the species we are, but it should also not control your life. The moment you see doubt in your life is the moment you can actually analyze it and be like, okay, I understand why, but I don't want this to actually make me stop what I'm doing. I actually want it to overcome and outperform at the end of the day. And that happens with like-minded people. Like if you have a circle of like-minded people, you have more support, you have a great network to connect with and they will support you. So get rid of people who don't wanna support you and get people in your life who actually support you. In 100 to 200 years, nobody will remember probably what we have been doing here. <laughs> maybe, maybe they will, but you know, it's so relieving actually that we don't need to care about that stuff because it's we are just this in the in this time and space kind of situation so don't care about that stuff too much when people are negative or giving you shit like take it and be like all right i'm gonna do it anyway embrace the cringe this is actually my favorite topic because i have been living through this over the past months myself. And I can tell you this right now, right here. It is so crucial that you embrace it. Cringe is subjective. People see something as cringe on this side and then they don't see it as cringe on the other side and the other way around. So no matter how much you actually feel cringed out with yourself, what you're doing right now, you know, your content, then that is just basically your mind telling you that you are now doing something you are not comfortable with. Because you wanna grow to this person and you are now maybe like here, but you're coming from here and you are like in this in-between zone. And it feels weird because you are not quite this person yet, but you also didn't really leave this person yet. Like the people who know you, they will be like questioning what you're doing because they don't know you like this. They feel it's weird. They feel it's cringe. They feel like, dude or girl, what are you doing? Like, do you not feel ashamed by that? Or do you not feel like you're too goofy on the internet right now? Or do you not feel like this is something you maybe shouldn't post? Like a lot of questions will come and you have to just stand up for yourself and be like, look, I actually want to leave the place I was in so why should I now care about those opinions? And this phase can be, you know, weeks, it can be months, but you will overcome it. And it will be your biggest driver when it comes to confidence. It gave me so much confidence because I was putting myself on the internet, sometimes a bit too goofy and too crazy. And you know, I was like, okay, let's see what's that gonna do. It gave me a lot of confidence. Like it gave me something I feel very good about myself. That's ultimately the goal. You need to be confident in your actions. You need to be standing up for your beliefs and values. And that only comes with a cringe face. Like your mom will maybe judge you. Your friends will maybe judge you, whatever. Don't even listen to them. 
embrace it. And you will just need to remember that this phase is normal. Like I, I'm pretty sure every creator goes through that. Like if you want to actually build an audience that is authentic and gives you trust, then you need to actually overcome the cringe phase because that's where you actually develop your true self on the internet, but also in real life because now you actually don't give a fuck anymore and last but not least you want to switch from a consumer mindset to a creator mindset and you want to like when you're there and you are you know consuming your content and you're just like passively consuming it and be like oh, okay and like your whole brain gets filled up with like dopamine hits and you're like completely fried after that session, then that's not gonna help you. You need to consume with intent. You need to actually go on and be like, analyzing what you're doing, like analyzing what you're seeing and be like, ah, okay, interesting. Okay, that video has, you know, this kind of metrics and okay, I understand why. And this one didn't really perform well, actually. Hmm, why is that? And now you can bring that to your own content because you need to understand this as a content creator who wants to build a brand, who wants to build an audience, who wants to actually build something with substance. You need now to understand how attention works and understand how human behavior works. It's going to be part of your job. And social media platforms is nothing else than human behavior in a digital era. The digital era just started. It just begun. So you cannot be ignorant about that if you actually want to create a successful brand these days. Like if you are like being, oh, but I'm an artist and I don't want to do this because you know, my art is everything to me. Good, but then you are in the wrong business. This is a business, it is. Like you, sh you provide value to the outside world, create a product maybe someday or already have, I don't know. And now you actually need to, you know, understand how to communicate that and how to distribute that on those platforms. And you can only do that if you understand how attention works. Attention is your most valuable currency because that's actually how you can connect with the people emotionally, but also share value with them. And they now build trust towards you and then they will turn into followers. But if you're just like looking for a quick fix and a, and a social media hack and an algorithm hack, yes, those things are important. Like I'm not saying that the algorithm is not a part of social media, it, oh, obviously it is. But it's like, if you're only focusing on that part, your feed will look very weird. It will just look like very trendy and very like, you know, the next hype train you chose. And then people will be like, oh, okay, it doesn't really have any soul here. It doesn't even have any authenticity here. It's just like kind of like one video after the other, which is kind of like try to make it. Build yourself first, build your mindset first. Switch from a passive to an active mindset. Switch from a consumer to a creator. And then you can understand why some brands are actually existing for a very long time and some brands are just a one-hit wonder. All right, we're gonna wrap it up here. I'm super grateful that you showed up here and invested your time today to actually listen to me. Um, this is nothing I take for granted. There is a lot of content out there you could consume within that time, but I hope that this actually has a bit of an impact and that you now kind of understand a bit more why mindset is the first part of how you actually can reach an audience and create your own audience and actually build a personal brand that might blow up over, you know, night. It's never going to blow up overnight. It's gonna be hard work accumulated over time, creating a snowball that becomes bigger and bigger and then creating this kind of like avalanche. Then your overnight success should be there, but it's never going to be that. It's, it's going to be work, and dedication and commitment, passion, you, you, you need that. If you don't have that, then you will be gone sooner than later. Once again, thank you for watching and, and I'm gonna pitch you now something. If you're interested in joining an exclusive community, we have been building on a kind of inner circle uh, called Bulletproof um, and we are super proud to actually do this because yeah, the, we see it makes a difference. It's basically people coming together in a more kind of like compressed environment. And it's, you know, creators 
exchanging value with each other. We have four workshops a month uh, with also guest speakers or guest workshops with other bigger creators. We have courses that are being launched and we got creative products in there, like digital creative products for all the members. So there is an early bird phase going on right now. There's a link in the description. If you want, check it out. If not, thanks again for watching and leave a comment, subscribe, you know, do all the things we need to do in order to grow on these platforms. I would appreciate it and see you in part two of this series about how I went from 5,000 followers to 150,000 followers on Instagram.